And we live in a time of great opportunity. That's what I want to share about this morning. Opportunity in adversity. And, um, um, you know, we've got satellites today. We can get the phone out and provided it's the right time, we can dial and talk to Rick and Fiona. Anyone done that? Anyone called Rick and Fiona from here? When they've been in... Oh, well, we should. Come on, we want to encourage them. It's just as simple as picking up your phone and probably 10 bucks if you speak for five minutes. Skype for free. Or Skype for free, that's exactly right. Um, and if you use Skype, you see them as well as hear them sometimes. 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 It might be better in Ghana. Yeah. Um, in Mozambique, it just seems so out of place to see a big satellite dish outside a traditional mud hut. But we live in incredible times, times of opportunity. You know, pastors who are, are so poor that their collars are frayed, you know, around here and, and around here. Um, you know, they, they, um, they just are so poor, but, you know, they have um, a phone and um, they'll pull out their mobile phone and ask you for your number and your email uh, after the meeting. Um, we've never lived in times like this where we can access um, people all around the world. And uh, please open your Bibles, your iPhones, your iPads, uh, whatever you've got to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 5. Beautiful. And uh, Paul in his letter to the Corinthians says, Now I will come to you, I will come uh, to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia, um, and it may be that I will remain or even uh, spend a winter with you, uh, that you may send me on my journey. Uh, wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you, if the Lord permits. And I will tarry in Eph Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great and effective door has opened to me. And uh, there are many adversities. Okay, we were hoping to have John Wanier here with us this morning. And a great adversity hit him when he tried to cross the border um, of Kenya and to fly out to Australia. They actually wouldn't let him through. Something was wrong, or they said something was wrong. And so he's not here. Uh, we may get a chance to catch up with him in August before he actually leaves. John um, has an orphanage in um, Uganda, and uh, he has, uh, seven, he's looking after 17 children himself. Um, so he's qualified. John was also the ACMI uh, National President for Uganda, for ACMI. A lovely guy. He's spoken here once before. Once, at least once. So, okay. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversities. The, you know, the Amplified Bible says, a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me there, and a great and promising one. So I want to share something today about opportunities in the midst of adversity. Um, you know, we're hardly in adversity, but sometimes we feel like the pressure is so bad on us that um, we feel um, there's an issue. Um, sometimes uh, things aren't going right in life and uh, we just feel like the whole world's falling in on us. When I was a new Christian, um, as I've shared before, I couldn't read or write very well definitely wouldn't read in public and uh, really struggled to read. Anyway, I was asked to help out with a youth camp and Dawn was out of action either with a baby, a new baby or, or something like that. She couldn't come. And the camp leader was a missionary who was on leave. Uh, her name was Anne Cronin. Uh, she'd been in Chad. She'd been in... Um, uh, where else? Um, a little place. I just chatted Yeah. And um, Anne held a couple of preparation meetings uh, where we were talking about... Uh, what we would do, and my, I understood that all I was doing was taking care of the outdoor activities, which I was happy with, you know, games and rope games and canoeing and all that kind of stuff. And shared what she thought she might uh, uh, say. Um, she went through the materials, the lessons that we were going to do, and um, you know, when God starts, you kind of feel like He's toying with you a little bit, and uh, He's calling you to do something that you're not really uh, confident about. And, you're not really sure that you want to step out, and um, and uh, you know, but he makes a way for that to happen, doesn't he? Well, the night before we were meant to head off from this youth camp, 
Um, Anne calls up and says she's got a shocking bug, she can't move, she's on the toilet one minute and then doubled up in pain again. And, um, and she said, well, you're just going to have to take the lessons, Peter, and do the older call. Whoa! I started to shake, literally, at the thought of that. You know, truly fearful that um, uh, that was going to fall to me. And I'm thinking, who else can we get into this? Who else can we bring in? But anyway, it fell to me. <coughs> and uh, just as I listened to Anne on the phone, God reassured me that he would do it. So I thought, okay, if I really don't have to do it, if God's going to do it, then it'll be okay. And uh, long story short, when I gave the altar call at the end of the, towards the end of the camp, you know, before lunch, at the last meeting when you had the church service, before lunch, 13 of the 17 kids gave their life to Jesus. Um, you know, and they formed the basis of um, the youth group that, uh, that followed. It was just a move of God. And that's why I said it was, because I had nothing to do with it. I was shaking my boots. You know, God just moved incredibly. So church, I want to say, every day is an opportunity. Every day you're alive, there is an opportunity for you uh, to succeed in God. The season we live in is a season of opportunity. Paul was writing to the disciples in Corinth saying, I can't come to you yet because a wide door of opportunity has opened to me. A great and promising one. Okay? So he's just letting them know what he is. So this morning I want to share three things about great opportunities. Firstly, great opportunities are more important than little problems. Paul wrote his uh, letter to Corinth uh, to address the problem in the church and uh, he had to bring balance, he had to bring uh, correction in the church and, uh, uh, and also encourage them at the same time. And then in verse 7 it says, For I do not wish to see you now, but on the way, uh, now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you. So Paul didn't want to just visit them um, on, on his way through. No, he wanted to stay with them and spend some time with them to minister into their hearts and make some corrections and all of those kinds of things. You know, he had uh, many problems waiting for him at Corinth. He had carnal people, uh, he had imbalance in the church, but then the, in Ephesus he had an open door to great opportunity. Okay, so we're going between Paul's in Ephesus and he's talking to the people at Corinth. He said, we'll take the opportunity. Um, no, so... When he had to choose between problems or opportunities between Corinth and, and Ephesus, he said, well, I'll take the opportunity. Because, you know, problems are commonplace. Problems are with us always. They're always going to be there. You know, and I guess, you know, if we want to reflect right now on our own lives, how many times do we try and solve our problems or someone else's problems and, and uh, if we're not careful, we may find that all our time and energy have gone on just solving problems. So there's nothing positive really happening. You're just correcting something. And God wants us to be thinking. And you know, you're not going to be creative if you're just breaking through problems. God wants you to be creative, inventive. He wants you to see new things. But you can't do that if you're always just dealing with problems and solving problems. You know, can I ask you what problems are crushing you at the moment? Because I remember a time when I had problems left, right and centre and, and it just seemed like they were all just on top of me and crushing me. You know, what problems are causing you to miss out on the opportunities that life still has for you? I, I'm 65 and I believe that life has so many opportunities for me. And I want to encourage you today to believe that, that God has so much for you. So much for you. Dawn said in the meeting, uh, the prayer meeting this morning, you know, that Peter wants to um, be ministering till he's 80. Well, I probably want to be ministering till I'm 105. Hey. I would set the benchmark on. I would want to be here, I know that. Okay, I know that, but I'm not going to just retire. I can't just retire. That's right. Old pastors never retire. They just keep on preaching the gospel. Something like that. So we, we must understand, um, you know, uh, that, that um, 
Opportunities are unique. I'll say it again. Opportunities are unique. And, and you'll know what I'm saying if you've missed an opportunity. Mm. You'll know. In the spiritual sense, if you miss an opportunity, it's like a breath. It's like a breath. You know, and you can miss an opportunity in the natural. And you can get over that. Because that doesn't matter. Because God will always bring you another opportunity. It'll be a different one. But they are unique as they come to us. Opportunities don't last forever. Usually we get a window of time uh, that we must take advantage of. Paul could have raced off to Corinth uh, to solve all the problems, but when he had a choice to go for the problem or go for the opportunity, he went for the opportunities. And I want you to, I want to encourage you to do that. Sometimes you have to deal with problems at work, right? But I want you to go for the opportunities. If it's a problem, see it as an opportunity. See it as an opportunity to break through with someone, to, to set them free from something, to encourage them. All problems can be overcome because God gives us opportunities. Secondly, great opportunities need to be discerned. And uh, Ephesus was a dark place. It was an occult place. Um, it was the centre of Diana worship. Hundreds of pilgrims, probably even thousands, came each week to offer sacrifice. But Paul writes in Ephesians 5.15, See then that you walk circumspectly. You know, walk knowing how you're really living before God. And uh, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the, of the, the, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You know, the Amplified Version, it says what it means, doesn't it? It amplifies it for you. And it says, buy up each opportunity, for the days are evil, grasping what the will of the Lord is. Um, so... In evil days, there are opportunities. There are opportunities in evil days. And, and we live in evil days. We live in really evil days. We're told to buy up each day because the days are evil. Buy up each day because in adversity there is opportunity. Even though the days are evil, we can stand for Christ. We can stand for good in the place where we live. You know, we've so far exceeded Sodom and Gomorrah in this country. We have left it for dead. God's judgment came on that. But we have left it for dead because, um, because of Christ and God wants people to be saved. He hasn't acted yet. But he is going to act. He is going to act. And, and people are really messed up because of their thinking. People are messed up because of their thinking. How many messed up people do you meet each day because of their thinking? They think that good is evil and evil is good. In everyday life, I meet people like that. They don't justify how they think. If they think it, it's okay. And, and it's causing confusion. Absolute confusion. People don't know what's right or wrong anymore. They're just justified by this great thing of words that mean nothing. You know, and uh, many of these confusions have made it into legislation. They have legal standing now. In New Zealand, they've legalised same-sex marriage. Here in Victoria, you can abort a child up to nine months. And seeing there's no children in here, I'll tell you what they do. They birth the head and then they suck its brain, drill a hole in the brain and suck its brains out. And they say, that's okay. That's evil. That's a terrible evil. A terrible evil. Oh, it's only a fetus. A terrible one. But can I say, the level of evil has never been so prevalent as it is today. But I can tell you that God has called you, God has called you and he's called me for such a time as this, to stand up and speak the truth. Speak what is good and honest and true. Um, you know, in these evil days we live and we need to buy up each opportunity. Come on, church. Yeah. We need to buy up each opportunity we see. And I believe that's a great translation because, you know, any time you 
get into something, anytime you see some evil and you get into it. You're buying it up because it costs you. It costs you in your time, it costs you emotionally, it costs you spiritually. And God is saying, buy up the day of evil. Buy up the day of evil. You know, because the name of Jesus is higher than anything. It's stronger than anything. It's more powerful than anything. These are the days of evil we live in and we need to buy up each opportunity. We do this because we understand that in adversity, in trouble, in evil, there is the opportunity to do good. The opportunity to do good. In the evilness of these days, there are doors that only God is opening and, and only God can open them and he is opening them for us. Doors of light. Um, that we can shine the light of the gospel into a hurting world. Church, the greater the darkness, the more we will shine. And I know this is true because when I light a fire down there um, to get rid of all the branches and stuff, it, I'm supposed to put it out. And I think, oh, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. And then by the time I pack away, you know, it looked quite low, but by the time I pack away, it's dark again. And you can see this fire, which I was supposed to put out. The darker it is, the more our light is going to shine in this evil world. Yeah. And thirdly and lastly, sometimes great opportunities come in small packages. Um, a great and wide open door. I, I like the um, Amplified Bible because it makes the opening even bigger. Okay? That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rick. You know, I see Ryan Bonke's video on YouTube in Africa. Has anyone watched one of those? Yeah. More than a million people at his meetings. You just can't believe it. It's like a sea of people as far as you can see and they just go into blur. You can't see the end of it. And so they've got speakers going out kilometres each way. Um, and just absolutely, you know, that's a door of opportunity. That's a real door of opportunity. Uh, when he gets up there to speak because people are hungry for God's word. And uh, I love uh, to, yeah, because that's that, that door. You know, church, there is no reason why we can't see that door wide open for us. Okay? As intercessors, we're starting to pray that that door will open. You know, we, we, we've been praying that that door will open and guess what? The school asked uh, two weeks ago, could they run a disco here? You know, just for the grade five and six. And, of course, we said yes. Why? Because when they come here, we can preach the gospel to them. We can show them love. We can uh, give them little pamphlets. We can uh, encourage them. We can uh, really um, make a difference. Um, because what we do here with the school is quite different to what we do in the school. So we've got an opportunity this Friday night. Please pray for it. So let's remember that Paul has told the church in Corinth that he wants to come and spend some quality time with them, but at the moment there is a wide open door of opportunity in Ephesus, so he can't come just yet, right? Um, was Paul being evangelistic like, um, you know, the, uh, um, that other Bible that starts with A? Amplified. <laughs> oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> You know, was Paul being evangelistic? Let's take a look. Um, Acts 19, verse 1. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. So he found some disciples there. How many were they talking about? Verse 7 tells us maybe it was 120,000 disciples there at Ephesus. Or 1,200. No, there was only 12 in all. You know, is that it? Is that this big wide door of opportunity? Doesn't look like a great and effective door to you. 12 people? And you know, no, sometimes a great and effective opportunity to have small beginnings. See, we look at our little church and we think, oh, what's going to happen, you know? But it's already happened. It's start, we're starting to grow. 
Um, we're also growing in Africa at an exponential rate, um, gone into four other countries now. Um, you know, nothing we're doing, but it's what God's doing. Uh, so we need to be um, moving with the Spirit of God and preparing our friends um, and uh, inviting them to things that we do and then eventually to our life group and then eventually to church. So we know that sometimes the great and effective opportunities have small beginnings. This was a day of small beginnings. They didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm not going to read it. Um, Paul just said, raise your hands and receive the Holy Spirit, and they did. And he said, raise your hands and open your mouth, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. How about that for church? No religion, just relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That's amazing. Praise God. Praise God. Church, I really hope you've been uh, encouraged this morning. Um, these 12 became Pentecostals. That's a joke. <laughs> Instant Pentecostals, like my mum. Got saved at 68 or something. Gave her life to Jesus, spoke in tongues the same, same night. And all the time during when the guy was speaking, she was reading the full gospel men's brochure. And I'm saying, Lord, let her hear you. Lord, let her hear you. She did hear and she got saved and baptised in the Holy Spirit at the same time. These were, um, these 12 were the wide and open opportunity, okay? These 12 were the wide and op open opportunity that uh, uh, Paul was talking about. And verse 8, he, he went into the synagogue and he spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, they spoke evil of the way before the multitude. So, you know, Paul's facing adversity there, uh, but he's taking the opportunities. Paul um, had that severe opposition, and, and I'm sure the devil was whispering in his ear, just like the devil was whispering in my ear when I got that opportunity as a, as a baby Christian. Maybe you didn't hear God. And I was thinking, maybe Anne didn't hear God. You know, uh, there were only there were only twelve. I thought God was going to open a big door for me. Uh, maybe uh, you better quit. Who said maybe you better quit? Yeah. 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 Well, thank God he didn't. He took all the disciples to the hall of Tyrannus and continued to preach and teach the disciples for two years. Thank God for his stickability. I love people who have stickability. Uh, thank God for people who are able to keep a big vision in a small place. What's your vision? What's your vision? Do you know what the vision for this place is? It's for multiple churches of 200. Faithful men and women who will train up faithful men and women. That's the vision for this church. I've been here 13 years. Am I heartbroken? No. Because God gave me that vision. He's, got, he's the one who's going to complete it, not me. Those who keep a big vision, even though they face opposition, persecution, indifference, they keep on going no matter what. That's the kind of people we want to be. One of the hardest uh, challenges that we face in our community is indifference. Yeah. Who's come up against indifference at school, at church, at work? Yeah. When you tell someone that Jesus loves them, they say, yes, yeah, so what? So what? See, they don't know that the Son of God came to earth to pay the penalty for our sins so that we can be in fellowship with the Father. That's what I love about Africa. The people are so hungry. They walk long distances. They sleep rough while they're there just so they can hear the Word of God. You know, I had, um, I preached 20 minute sermons and uh, so I added a little bit and preached a half an hour and that means it's an hour by the time someone interprets and they look and they said to me, is that all you got? Is that all you got? Okay. So what was the result of this open door? Verse Chapter 9 and verse 10. And this continued for two years so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord. 
Jesus, um, the Lord Jesus, both Jew and Greek. So they continued for two years that in all Asia, um, so that all Asia heard the good news. So let's put this in perspective. Okay, verse one says he found some disciples. Verse six says there are only twelve disciples. Or in my version, it says there was around twelve disciples. <laughs> you know what Christians are like. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's a hundred at our meetings, you know, every Sunday. There's around a hundred. So it might have been less than twelve, but it's you know, let's settle for twelve. And now Luke reports after two years, all of Asia, both Jew and Greek, have heard the good news. You know, sometimes great opportunities come from small beginnings. And uh, you know, we've got to take our opportunities. Um, so remember today the great opportunities are more important than little problems. There are Always problems, but opportunities are unique, so take those opportunities. Great opportunities need to be discerned. In these evil days, we need to shine the light of the gospel more than ever. You and I are the beacons in our community. Decide where you're going to shine your light. Where God is asking you to buy up the opportunity and discover that in adversity there is opportunity. Amen? Amen? It's going to cost you something. And thirdly, some uh, great opportunities come from small packages, from small beginnings. Keep lifting your vision higher. Don't look at your circumstances. Look at the open door. Look at what God can do through your obedience. See, half the time we're just not obedient. I love missionaries because whatever God has got for them and they don't know, they're obedient. They just go to places we wouldn't go. They live in a way that we wouldn't live. They're obedient. Let's learn from them. Let's support them. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes, please. Maybe you can see your life. You can see in your life at the moment there are problems and disappointments. There are issues that are not dealt with. I just want you to ask God now, just in the quietness, don't have to speak, just ask him to come into those issues. Ask him to come into those problems. Ask him to make them opportunities. Well, Pastor, my problems are too big. See, I say no. Jesus' name is more powerful than any other name. He's stronger, greater, bigger, taller. In every way, he will come into your situation. Maybe you've never asked Jesus to come into your life and take control of it. Then I ask you to look at the wide open door that God has placed before you today. Well, it's not wide open actually, it's closed. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door to me, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. See, the lock is, the latch is on our side. We have to Turn the handle or lift the latch and open the door. Jesus will never force himself into our life, but he will come into our life. He will uh, take our problems and show us where the opportunities are. So if that's you right now, you want Jesus to take control. I'm just going to pray a prayer. All our heads are bowed. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come in and take control of my life. I confess my sin to you. I don't hide it. I acknowledge that you died for my sin and I ask you to come in, make all things new, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me that fresh start that I need, Lord. I want to see opportunities and problems. And I know that your name and all your actions 
but made this possible for me. So I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to pray for you after. Uh, so please come and see me. Um, it's important because we can give you some material to, to look through and to begin your journey with Jesus. Amen.